can ever in detail plan your life. It was so hard actually prior to the competition na uh, it planned out yung days after coronation night. Kasi hindi mo alam, mananalo ka ba? Matatalo ka ba? What's going to happen? Um, so now I just have this mindset of just enjoying every day, making the most of every day, and really maximizing all, all of the opportunities and all of the love that you've been overwhelmingly showering over me. Thank you. The image or picture, but you thought that you were closer through the TikToks. Yes. Because you did a lot of TikToks with her, right? Yes, I did. Um, you know, both of us, we really do try to enjoy our time, especially our downtime. Mm -hmm. After such a hectic, competitive two and a half <laughs> weeks, parang we were in Mexico when all of those TikToks happened and we were roommates. And I think it was that Mexico leg that we really became closer. Yeah. Honestly, your voice for change. That is the award that focuses on your advocacy. Really gave that my advocacy a platform for global recognition. I really in in is everything that was on my script. I really supervised the execution of the video, the content, because that was my mission at Miss Universe. If they didn't make that recent shift to focus on advocacies. Feeling ko talaga hindi ako sa sale last year. I wouldn't have the energy. But because my brothers, the millions of individuals on the spectrum, they give me so much inspiration. Kaya nung nanalo kami ng gold for Voice for Change against, I believe, 70 at yung delegates na nagsubmit ng videos. To be able to get into that top three, to get that gold medal, it really... It really confirms that my advocacy is one that you can't ignore. It's an opportunity, not just for myself, but for the millions of individuals on the autism spectrum. It was supposed to be your para spotlight, then siyempre na share to sa, especially oh, sa ano ko ba? I've always been such a proud ate, and the more work he gets, I think may, uh, may commission din yung ate journey, di ba? <laughs> <laughs> no, so I, I've always, I've always, tried to expose him since he was younger. Not the man expose him showbiz, but really be proud of the kind of brother that my parents and my sister and I actually raised. Kaya for him to get this much attention, I think it's a testament talaga of how good my mom's genes are. And he's actually backstage. He was visiting at TikTok Lock. He's very happy that all of you guys are here. Pero nawawala yung phone niya, so hinahanap niya naman. Okay. Actually waiting for a segment na maha highlight yung mga winners. Mm -hmm. Of course, it was already announced that I was in the top ten, top ten silver finalists, mm -hmm. and then po yung tatlong winners. Mm -hmm. So I thought we were going to insert a segment to really give the advocacies the spotlight it deserves. Pero I was backstage hanggang patapos na parang ay wala pala. Only when I replayed the whole pageant that I saw that they announced it briefly. Mm. But if there was one thing that I wish was more highlighted was was that part. Yeah. Oh my god. Answer for you. But I am just happy that my yeah. advocacy won it. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. There you go. Well, the one thing that actually really surprised me throughout my campaign was how strong the Bayanihan spirit was throughout the Philippines. I won three of those awards not because, I mean, yes, part of it was what I showed on stage, but majority was because of the support of all of the Filipinos also. And to win, because that's national court, to win three heavily fan voted merits. Grab it, that really shows the whole universe that the Philippines is a force to be reckoned with. It's not always just about the candidate, but it's really about how a country can come together to support one cause. And of course, I, I did micromanage every aspect of my competition, down to the PR plans, marketing, social media, the gowns. I actually just left Mark to do his thing. The national costume, Michael Barassi just did his thing. But if anything, the Philippines is home to some of the most 
creative individuals around the world, passionate individuals. And my job was just to make sure that I work with the right people that can share that vision, that can execute that same passion that I have to represent the Philippines also. Madali lang kasi magsabi, I need a gown and I need a national costume. But if makita ng team mo na ikaw mismo, yung nagtatrabaho to make sure everything is perfect, nakakahawa. It, it's very contagious. And I think that goes for every Filipino here also that shares that passion for Miss Universe. Yeah. Definitely in Miss Universe. I actually chose to get into acting before pageantry. Ako kasi I'm very self-aware. I'm also one of my biggest critics. And I knew that I was going to join a beauty pageant eventually. But I knew that I had a confidence issue. And acting first was the one that really helped me be confident to be in front of cameras, to speak in front of so many people, to cry on set in front of a hundred people. That really breaks that vulnerability wall that I needed to really have that confidence to showcase my own self on a pageant stage. Because it's no joke. I have so much respect for all beauty queens. Because to stand up on a stage, to subject yourself to so much scrutiny, bashing, negativity, that takes strong women with strong willed minds to, to be able to do that. And my last question, you know, you, you just said that you knew you were going to compete, to go, to go into a pageant eventually. Um, if you are, if you will be blessed with a daughter um, somewhere down the road, uh, would you also um, try to encourage her to follow in the footsteps of your mother and of course, you know. One thing's for sure. One thing's for sure, my mom never pressured me to join pageantry. She was actually very surprised when I joined my first pageant and when I joined again. I she would be hindi naman huli pero lagi nilalaman after I applied. Um, but if ever I was blessed with a daughter, I I would do the same thing and say that you know it's your life. If if ever you need my help, I'm here. But I would never pressure her to to get into pageantry, especially if she doesn't want to. Because again, from my experience, you really have to be 100% sure to be able to do that. You can't just be peer pressured into, you know, trying to represent a country like the Philippines. Fair, honestly, sana magkalala ko na lang ako. Na ano? Anyway, thank you. Internet not shy in the corner like I used to when I was a child. I used to be very introverted. It really helped. So thank you, GMA, for creating this queen. Yeah. And I also remember that. Oh, mano. Naalala mo. Naalala mo. Because I was hosting. So. Naalala mo. And everybody was there as well. So. Yes, yes. And then here we are. Here we are. So, I don't think of myself as, as you know, a superstar yet or anything. I'm, I'm very grateful for the love. But of course, I think any actress or actor can relate that kailangan talaga yung mga projects bumabagay sa capabilities mo. But in this case, GMA knows me from the inside out. Kaya nila sinuggest yung Black Riders because they know that you know, nagmomotor ako, I'm an adrenaline junkie, and to have that kind of support system, making sure that the projects I get is in line with what works for me, that's, that's a very big blessing, for sure. Oh, before, kasi di mo kontrabida. Kontrabida, vida, or kahit extra, it all just depends on the storyline, the, the project, the co-actors. Ako, I'm very artistic, I love acting. Hindi naman ako diva na namimili. But of course, it all just depends on on where to put that energy. Ah, uh, hindi naman kailangan yun dun sa kay Miss Anne, yung mga bankruptcy issue and everything. Tapos may mga, yun nga, may mga, mga trans woman na mga candidates, mga, mga mother. Kamusta yung atmosphere dun with your co-candidates? Tapos with with those issues dun sa Miss Universe sa organization? Organization? Um, organization. Honestly, pagsasama namin ang mga girls, it all felt normal. I didn't feel anything different in terms of um, like Miss Portugal or Miss Netherlands who were the transgender women or delegates. I didn't feel any any different. It didn't feel like, of course, it's my first time internationally for Miss Universe, but it didn't feel any different from my first international pageant being surrounded by only women. Of course, 
you don't judge them based on their physicality or what's on the exterior. You judge them based on the conversations, their personality, how they how they talk to you, how they treat you. So it, it, it I didn't feel um, I didn't feel like there was anything different just because Miss Universe was being more inclusive. Of course, I don't think we felt the other issues because we were out there. So I actually don't know any insider information about the articles going around about the status of the business per se. Oh, hindi naman 